In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to use these three different functions, closing balance month, closing balance quarter, and closing balance year in Power BI. I'm going to show you how to implement them step by step. And I'm also going to explain to you why it could be a better alternative to different functions like last date. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So these three DAX functions are fairly self-explanatory and it basically does what it says on the tin. It returns the closing balance for the current context that you are on. And it's also fairly simple to use. Now, since there are three variations of the closing balance DAX function, we're only gonna focus on one, which is closing balance month, but pretty much the logic applies across all the three different variations. So before we get into the demo, let's have a look at what it says on the documentation itself. So this is the documentation for the closing balance balance month DAX function. And if you want to get into this document, I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can have a look at it yourself. And here it says that it evaluates the expression at the last date of the month in the current context. So essentially giving you the last date of the specific month that you are on. The syntax is pretty simple. It asks for two parameters uh, as a minimum, an expression which returns a scalar value, which is just one value and then a column that contains dates. You can also add a filter, um, but it is an optional uh, parameter, which I'll show you how to add um, and how to tweak around with that later. And it returns a scalar value with one value that represents the expression which is being evaluated by this context. So now that you know the basics of this DAX function, let me show you how it works in action. So here's a simple Power BI report that I created, which has a couple of tables, um, but essentially what you'll need to pay attention to is, first of all, we have a table here called exchange rates, which just has two columns, uh, the dates for the duration that we have. And I believe I created this for just the whole of 2021. So from January the 1st to the 31st of December and the exchange rates for each of those dates. And essentially what we want to do is we want to use the closing balance month to get the closing balance or the exchange rate for the specific month context. So this table is related to our calendar table here, which pretty much is what we use for our time intelligence uh, calculations. And if we go here to the model view, you'll see that it's, uh, it has a relationship between the dates so that we can use the calendar for our time intelligence. So if we go back to the empty uh, page here, uh, we can just drag in the year month here and let's bring in the exchange date for uh, exchange rate for each of those months. So you'll see that obviously because we have a value an exchange rate for every single uh, month of uh, the dates that we have here, we need to aggregate the exchange rate, which at the moment is defaulted to a summarize, which is just adding it up. Uh, and from here, instead of getting the sum, maybe we want to get the last value for that month. And you'll see on the side here, the implicit filter uh, that we can use doesn't actually provide us that option. I mean, we can use the minimum or maximum, which is the closest we can get. But what it does is it gives you the maximum exchange rate that is in that context, which is of the year month. That's not what we want, because if we bring in the dates and exchange rate, what we want to see is for every single month here, give me the value for the last date of that month. So we should see 101 for January, because that's the last exchange rate for that month. And for February, we should see 99 because that is the last exchange rate for that month. So to solve this, we need to create something in DAX. And this problem seems pretty simple enough. I mean, obviously you can just use the calculate function, which we normally use and just try to get the last dates. 
In fact, let's do that first before we get to the closing balance function. So if I go new measure from here, uh, closing balance, I'll name it, and we'll just type calculate and we'll say give me a the exchange rates and I'm putting it within the max because we need to aggregate that uh, somehow but uh, just leave it as it is and then we can just say give me the last date for the date so if we click enter there and now let's drag that uh, closing balance here you'll see that it does exactly what we need. So you'll see for January, it gives us 101, which is exactly what we needed. You'll see that the last date exchange rate for January is 101. And we just looked at February, which we know is 99. So perfect. It pretty much solves the problem that we have. However, what you'll notice is that this only works because it's currently in the current context of the year month. So what does that mean? So because we have grouped this uh, table using year month, you will see that in this current context of January, it's giving us 101 because of that context. But if you remove that context, it won't show 101 anymore. So what do I mean by that? If I now drag this measure into the uh, another table that we have here, which is the uh, table that shows us every single date with every single exchange rate. So basically it's not doing a year month context. It's doing a date to date context. You'll see that the closing balance doesn't understand the context anymore of the month because it just sees the row by itself. So it basically just mirrors the exchange rate because it's only one exchange rate for every single context in this row. And to resolve this issue, we can use this DAX function, the closing balance month. So let's try to write that now. So let's create a new measure. I'll type uh, closing balance month. So from here, we're gonna simply type closing balance month um, and we don't need to wrap it around calculate because it already returns a scalar value, which is just one as a result. So our expression, uh, obviously we need to aggregate our column here as an expression. So we'll just name, we'll just try to do the same thing. So we'll do a max of the exchange rates. Doesn't really matter here. And then we need to feed it a column of dates, which we can just use the calendar dates here. Uh, we can skip the filter because that's optional and we hit enter. That's it, pretty simple. And now let's drag this into our table here, first of all, on the left-hand side. And you should see that it sort of mirrors, so obviously it's correct. You can see that it's the same as our previous measure where we were using last dates. And now if we go back to this table with a different context, it doesn't matter now what the context is because we are using this DAX function, the closing balance month. You will see that for every single date in January, it's giving you what the closing balance is for that month, which is, we know the 101. For February, you can see that the closing balance month is 99 and so on and so on. Now, if we just flick through to the documentation really quickly, I showed you that there is a third parameter here, which is an optional parameter you can add called filter. And you can pretty much use this to add a filter context in your DAX measure or calculation. And you would know that this parameter is an optional uh, parameter by the box brackets around it, the, the box brackets around the uh, filter parameter here. So we can demonstrate that by going to the demo that I created. And there is also another table that I created here called rates, which uh, is pretty much the same thing, except it has two currencies in it. So whereas before we were working with uh, one uh, unknown exchange rate, now we have two currencies. We have an exchange rate for uh, the Japanese yen, and we have uh, another one for the Philippine pesos and we want to create a measure that uses this 
column as a filter context. So if we create a new page here, and let's say we want to deal with this uh, two different uh, exchange rates um, with two different uh, currencies. And just to show you how it looks like in a table, I'm just gonna just bring it up here. And if I show it to you in a matrix, maybe that will be easier to visualize. If I do currency as a column, so yeah. So here you can see that for all the dates that we have, we have a different set of currency. And let's say we want to create and use the same uh, measure that we did, except we want to get the closing balance for just the Japanese yen. Uh, and to do that, it's pretty simple. Let's follow the same method that we did before. So we're going to type a closing balance month JPY to signify that it, this measure is for the Japanese yen. Right. So we're going to type the closing balance month, first of all. And we're going to max the rates from the exchange uh, rates here. Same way as before, I'm gonna close that. We'll feed it the dates, which is the dates from the calendar table. And then we're gonna add the filter context here, which in this case, we want to just isolate to look at the Japanese yen. So from here, we're just gonna type currency is equals to JPY. And once you hit enter, that should be pretty much it. So if we go and add the year month here um, and we can show the closing balance JPY. So you'll see it pretty much follows the Japanese yen uh, last uh, closing balance. So if we go to, for example, you can see 101 here on the 31st, which is the same as the previous table. Go to February, it's also the same, it's 99. Even if we break it down to the dates, which is um, what we've done before. So here, for example, we are now just showing the dates and you'll see that even with the date context, you can see the uh, closing balance for each of the months. And if you're wondering what is the purpose of this optional filter, you could have just used a filter on the drop-down menu, for example. Um, the reason is uh, it creates an explicit uh, filter for your measure itself. So for example, you have someone else who might want to work with your model and maybe they're looking to use or just get the closing balance for the Japanese yen only. This measure ensures that if they drag this measure and use it on any calculation in your reports, it will ensure that this filter will only always show the Japanese yen and it cannot be changed, obviously, unless you uh, edit the measure. But by itself, it creates an explicit uh, calculation or filter context to your measures. And that's really it for this video. So as I mentioned to you, uh, we're only looking at the closing balance month in this video, but the same context applies to the other variations. So closing balance year and closing balance quarter. So if you ha wanna have a look at those, uh, leave a link in the description box below so you can check out how they work um, in the documentation. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.